Like, you, you guys, I'm guessing you guys have watched other people do this. Do I need to, like, do anything, like, do I need to turn on any certain settings? Like, is it gonna, is it gonna pop up with, like, my, like, IDs and stuff? Because I'm playing it through Steam or anything like that. Settings. Music. Text. Unseen text. After choices. Is it safe for streaming and stuff? I don't know fucking anything. This is actually, this is legit, by the way. Um, it may show your PC name or something. I can't remember. I've double checked the settings. There's nothing in the settings. There's like five settings. Alex, you're saying no. Alex, you 100% sure I'm just good to go? You're fine? You sure? Welcome to the Roughnecks. All right. Fuck it. Doki doki. <laughs> All right. Yeah? Yeah? Enter my name. Alright. Fuck it. I'm just worried. I'm also worried. Enter my name. Alright, Luke. I'm also worried about, um, just set, like, I'm, uh, I, I'm sure it's safe for streaming. I'm, I'm also worried about just, like, my, because I did it through Steam, but I just play games with Steam. I was worried about my settings coming up. Alright, here we go. No, no, I didn't do all caps, Luke. We can't see. You guys can see now, right? Is the mic picking up any of the audio? A little bit, or is it alright? Probably get away with not wearing headphones. Right. What's the volume like? What's the volume like? Show the trigger warning? What trigger warning? The banner might be covering dialogue it's not covering it well we'll see you later on won't we jumpster thank you very much the tier one sub by the way jumpster tenor thank you very much as well and jumpster thank you very much appreciate you guys volume's okay <coughs> oh the banner shouldn't be coming up like that anyway at the bottom why is it coming up like that Should be that banner. All right, it should be all right. Yeah, we'll see. Oh no, you guys can't see it. All right, I can read it. I can read it out loud. If that helps. I can't really lower the banner. It's gonna. If I lower the banner, it's gonna really like fuck with stuff. Because the other banner's behind it, and I can't actually do anything about that other banner. I don't know why. That banner won't go anywhere. See, it's just there forever. That banner is just there forever. It's really annoying. Like, even if I hide stuff, for some reason it's there. We can't see the text, though. There's nothing I can do. I can either... I can either... Alright, these are two options. These are two options. I can either shrink the game, or I can just read the text out loud. Move down... Hold down Alt and move up and down at the bottom window. What? Hold down Alt and move up the bottom of the window. The bottom of the window? What do you mean? What do you mean? Hold down Alt, move up the bottom window. What does that mean? What, 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 what do you mean? Move the capture up. All right. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Boom. Genius. All right, there you go. We just got a black bar at the bottom, right? Done. Is that, is that going to be better? Can we cut the top off, like right at the top there? Well done, WWE dead man. All right, cool. Let's go. Make it a bit smaller. What well, the capture?
can do. Really? What, like that? There you go, what about that? A bit weird, but I guess it works. A bit weird, but it works, right? Yeah. Alright, let's go. We just got some weird black border, but it's fine. Alright, let's go. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. Oh my god, the pronunciation. You guys can laugh at me. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today. But it's just kind of works out because you've known each other so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this that started around high school. She would oversleep more and more frequently and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel would better off running more? away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ah! <laughs> I almost slept again! But I caught you this time! Ugh. I got like beard hair. I was attacked by a beard. <clears throat> Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. All right. Ah! <laughs> you say like you weren't thinking about ignoring me. Ooh. <laughs> That's mean, Luke. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have to have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. <laughs> Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily you. By the way, Lou. Decided on a club to join yet? We're definitely not joining Doki Doki. <laughs> a club? I told you already. I'm not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Um, I'll check all their donations and stuff because I can't see them on the screen at the moment. I'll check them all at like different intervals. But thank you very much, whoever donated. I appreciate you. We're raising money for a good cause. Everyone, use exclamation donation. That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did. In one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Oh, this is a monologue, alright, I see. Sayori likes to know a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content to just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. God damn, it's one of us! It's one of us! Uh huh. <laughs> I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. This is amazing. You can put the donation bar at the top. No, I can't, Skid. What are you talking about? What donation bar? Remember, the reason it's down there is because it's like that's... For some reason, this, this one here is just stuck there. I can't get rid of it. Not the banner, the bar? You want the bar at the top. Yeah? I, mean, I can move it. Sure. There you, go. there you go. Is that better? You guys can see it there, right? <clears throat> and I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat. Alright, I've already read that part. I don't want to be scrutinized anymore. You trust me, right? Do we trust her? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. Have they got a neat club? No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Who the fuck is this girl? I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let... Well, I let, my, let myself relent to her? I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Would you like to know more? The school day is ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. 
Sayari wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Ooh. Hello. Sayori! Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. Ah, dude. <laughs> I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. What the fuck? We're a weirdo. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. Mm. Oh, let me read that again. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late for your own club. <clears throat> Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, you know what? Well, you can come to my club. Sayori. Yay! <laughs> There's no way I'm going to your club. Ah, meanie. Look at my, your meanie face. Sayori is, very, is the vice president of the literature club. <gasps> Not that I was ever made aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title of Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please, motherfucker! Why'd you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I'd bring a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sorry is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to plan this all out. I let out a long sigh. <gasps> Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Go get some cakes. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. That's understandable. I... What the fuck is that word? Dead... 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 Welcome to the Roughnecks. I follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Motherfuckers, what's up? Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Yeah, I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure meeting you. Girl one. <laughs> Sorry, always says nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Luke, what a nice surprise. How old are they? <laughs> How old are they? I'm, I'm, ma I'm making a point of not making any inappropriate jokes. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the club. Oh my god, girl one is my favorite. All words escape me in this situation. They're all 18. <laughs> are they? <laughs> 18 question mark? Definitely 18. <laughs> All visual novel characters are 18. All 18. <laughs> <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they are, yeah. All right. All 18. Okay. So we got Gazongas 1, Gazongas 2, and Gura. Uh, all words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? Oh man, it's too easy for a joke. If you want to say something, say it. S sorry? Nasuki? Hmm. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Nasuki is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made the cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Can I kind of like press spacebar? Will that work? It does. Hey, nice. Sorry, is the... Wait, I need to be close to the microphone. <laughs> it doesn't actually matter. Sorry says that quietly into my ear, then turns to the other girls. Anyway, this is Nasuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. I feel like you guys all love Yuri, right? 
Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, mm. uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. Yuri, Natsu Natsuki, Yuri, Natsuki. And it sounds like you already know Monica. Is that right? Who the fuck is Monica? Oh, Monica. That's right. It's great to see you again, Luke. After our visit, la <laughs> no, 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 jumpster. Ah, she's doing the classic pose. Monica smiles. <laughs> <coughs> smiles sweetly. We do know each other well. Ooh, damn. We do know each other well. That implies something. We rarely talk. <laughs> Jesus, man, my my character in this game is a legend. Damn. But we were in the same class last year. God damn. T, thank you very much for the 15 month resub. T, you absolute legend. Thank you very much, T. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, and athletic. I think his latest video was wearing them. Well, I, the music's coming out my speakers. I can hear the sounds and stuff. Basically, completely out of my league. I'm just enjoying being a bit more cozy. I've got my headphones here, but I'm, I'm just kind of liking the cozy vibes. If it's not, if it doesn't matter, if you guys don't care, I'll just keep them off. Um, but I've just got it coming out my speakers. I have proper speakers, by the way, if anyone's wondering. Basically, completely out of my league. Don't think it's a good idea to read it all. Do you guys not want me to read it? I thought I can not read it if you guys want me to just skip it. The thing is, I'm a quick reader in my head, so I don't, I don't know. What do you guys? Do you guys want me to read it or not read it? Yes, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. Okay, read it. Okay. <laughs> I was confused. Isn't the whole point reading? You want me to voice act it? Uh, Doodle's Dreams. Hello. All right. I don't know. I'm not going to voice act it. Uh, so having her smile at me genuinely feels a little... You, you too, Monica. I awkwardly hide my boner. Uh, come sit down, Luke. <laughs> we made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'm going to sit next to Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Fuck off, Sayori. Sorry, I got a little too excited. <laughs> then how about I make some tea as well? Yuri looks at me cheekily. <laughs> the girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Am I supposed to pick stuff? Natsuri... Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward because of my boner, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? I oh, she got a big smile now. All right. Hello, magic. Uh, ta-da. Ooh, ooh, ah. Nasuki left the foil of the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like your cats. All right. What's up? <clears throat> Everyone good? I saw like two people say the stream was, was, was fucking up. No? They all good? Okay. The whiskers are drawn with icing. Everything's good. Cool. Okay. Uh, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Nasuki. <laughs> well, you know, I'm pretty great. I just hurry and take one before I eat them all. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. <laughs> what the fuck it hell? <laughs> all right. This is intense. Oh, I follow. It's delicious. Sari talks with her mouthful and has already managed to get icing all over her face. I eye up the icing, <laughs> licking my lips. <laughs> Dark Palm, thank you very much for the reset for half a year. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I turn the cupcake around in my finger, looking for the best angle to take a bite. What the fuck is this? What is this? Looking for the best bite. Mm. This side, this side. Maybe from the top. Everyone knows you eat a cupcake. Sometimes the best way is from the bottom. Take off the wrapping from the bottom, then you get all the icing at once. Oh, it's nice. I always leave the best for last. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Perhaps she can see my awkward boner I'm hiding under the desk. Is she waiting for me to take a 
buy? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet, full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. There's a suspicious copper taste. To the <laughs> this is really good. By the way, for anyone wondering, I don't know fuck all about this game. That is, this is genuine. I don't. All I know is people told me to play it for flipping Halloween. So I'm guessing at some point, it, something happens. If it stays like this the whole way through, then I've just been trolled. Um, thank you, Nasuki. <laughs> Why are you thanking me? It's not like I haven't I heard this somewhere before. Made them for you or anything? Heard this somewhere before. I thought you technically did. Sayari said, well, maybe, maybe I did, maybe, but not, not for you, you, you dummy. All right, fucking cheese. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Get the fuck out of here, you crazy. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea. You guys like it, Yuri, over you come. She carefully, she carefully places the tea cup in front of each of us before sitting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good look? Well, I guess, yes, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's trying to sedu- I mean, impress you. It's not that. Insulted, Yuri looks away. <laughs> Man, I, I want to insert random jokes, but I'm not going to. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Ah, he's so dreamy. He likes tea and books. Monica raises an eyebrow then smiles at me. I'm going to bang him later, she thinks to herself. <laughs> so what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet. And Sayori seems really happy here, so that's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member of any of the major clubs. Weren't you the leader of the debate club last year? Ah, well, you know, I'm pretty amazing, and, you know, to be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs, especially the weebs in the anime club. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity. And how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement like this. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. That's true. Literature does grab your attention. You have to work hard to convince people that you are both fun and worthwhile. Otherwise, they may kill you. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I think Dark Pawn. I have Dark Pawn tea, thank you. I'm confident that we can all really grow in this club before we graduate. Right, everyone. Yes. We'll do our best. You know it. All right, here's the whole, the whole team. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Yes, like this. A lot of head nodding. Yes, we can do it. Let's go. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. This, I'm going to be honest, right? Now, at first, I would be like, this club sounds pretty shit. But having walked into this, this, this classroom, this is a pretty great club. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why they're also delighted at the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Luke. What kind of things do you like to read? Well, you know, the usual menus and game guides. Well, mm, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Nasuki's head suddenly pokes up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. You fucking weeb! <laughs> she thinks that's up. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, 
that can change, Yuri. What am I saying? I spoke about after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with a finger like this. It makes a little noise. My favorite are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. Like... Mm, manga. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in. But it's obvious by the way her eyes lit up that she finds comfort in the world of books. And not people! But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how writers can be so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. And I read a horror book once. Oh, that's me. Rewind. Ah! I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? Really, Reggie? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you! I guess you could say that. Mm, cheeky. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. So real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. Funny for a brief moment. Ugh. I hate horror. And why is that? Well, I just... I think his eyes dart from me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Nasuki? <clears throat> what? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind the class club meeting again. You know, with your doodles of penises. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say Out Loud. Well, give me that back. Fine, fine. Your cupcakes and your poems. Lower the game volume. Chat would like you to lower the BGM volume. The background, the background game with the music. The music. Yeah, that better. There you go, is that better? Better? I can turn up a little bit more if it's too quiet. There you go, what about now? How's that? There you go. Ehe! <clears throat> your cupcakes and your poems. Everything you could do is just as cute as you are. Sorry, slides up behind Nasuki. Puts her hands on her shoulders. Oh, you're a little tense, she says to her, whispering in your ear. She starts to tremble. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not cute. Nasuki, you write your own poems? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Yeah, I was hoping for a little louder. All right, hold on. I did turn it down quite a lot. I'll turn it down a more. There you go. I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Nasuki averts her eyes. You, you wouldn't like them. Uh, I'm not very confident. Wait, this is me. Ah, not a very confident writer yet, are we? Mm, okay. I understand how Nasuki feels. I agree, Yuri. I agree completely. Showing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. It takes gutso. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reasons of your heart. Do you have any writing experience, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Eh, I, I guess it's the same for Yuri. Ah, I want to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment, fantasizing about an orgy. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Mm -hmm. Natsuki and Yuri look... Quiz is that a word? Quizically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we will all share with each other. That way everyone is even. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it would help us get a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Luke? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. What's that? Now that we're back on the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sorry, may have convinced me to stop by, but I've never made a decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and um, I lose my train of thought because they will take off their I'm joking. All four girls stare at me with dejected eyes. Is this supposed to be dejected eyes? Let me just sink this in. Now, oh, yeah, this is the look that most women have looked at me my entire life. I feel this. Mm -hmm. It's familiar. But... I'm sorry, I thought... <clears throat> Luke... You, you all... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right! Okay, I've decided that. <laughs> I'm in. Um, sign me the fuck up. I'm in. I'll bake the next cupcakes. I'm in. Si boom. I'm in. I'm in. Son of a bitch, I'm in. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yay! Siri wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Uh, <laughs> Yuri, do you want to wrap your arms around me and jump up and down? Hey, you really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would have been super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. And thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem. Bring the next meeting. Welcome to the Rough Next. Monica looks Back over at me once more. <gasps> Luke, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Mm. <laughs> oh, God damn. She totally wants me, guys. Yeah. I can really impress a class star with Monarchy with a mediocre writing skills. I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. Oh, oh, oh. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Nasuki clean up their food. Hey, Luke, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Siri and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school. Sure, might as well. Hello, corn dogs. Yay! With that, the two of us depart from the club and make our way home. The whole way... My mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Asuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Mm -hmm. Well, mainly one of them. Will I, be re will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Let me think. Hmm, maybe. Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem. <clears throat> oh, fucking hell. Pick words you think your favorite club member would like. Something good might happen. Whoever likes your poem the most. I just, I'll write it like I would. Um, mm, peace, sweet, analysis, hop, friends, and raindrops. God damn. None of these are me. Um, termination. Awesome! I say that all the time. Termination awesome. Fireworks, Mega, Kawaii Charm. Oh wait, it tells you. It tells you. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, I don't. <clears throat> um, frightening. Uh, together? Horror? Climax! Yes! <laughs> um, fear, insight, rainbow, despise, aura. That's a cool word, you know. It's got to be that, right? Excitement, love, love, laugh. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> Fucking hell. It's like the Bo Burnham white woman's Instagram song. Um, graveyard is pretty cool. Mouse. Oh, Nightgown. Uh, quarter Cat, thank you very much. The 13 months, Quarter Cat. Appreciate you. Thank you very much, Quarter Cat. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. You absolute legend. 13 months. Damn. And Corn Dogs, thank you very much for the sub with Prime. Appreciate you, legend. After this part, we'll uh, we'll check the donations. We'll see how we're doing on our goal. Um, no spoilers, no. Uh, I'm not looking at chat for suggestions. Um, 
Like, these ones suck. Fucking ugh, graveyard, I guess. Um, fucking hell. Jesus, it gets dark down here. Ocean? Ocean's nice. Philosophy, Papa. Sw uh, uh, swimsuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, bunny, infinite. Clumsy, alone, treasure, ambient. I like ambient. It's a nice word. Yeah, ambient. Um, bed, romance. Giggle. Kitty? <sighs> fucking hell, there's a... Uh, we'll go kitty. Uh, anger, jumpy, marriage, dream. Vivid. Another nice word. Uncanny. It's a nice word. Lust. All right, let's just get really horny. <laughs> Tenacious. <laughs> After what the fuck is this word? After it, after, after image is that it? Defeat. I don't know the meaning of the word. Uh, atone. I'm gonna do tenacious. Sensation. Cry loud. I do like them. I'm joking. Uh, sensation. In F. Ulgent. Death. Bliss. Fireflies, nice. Uh, vibrant anime. Pout, melancholy. Inferno, inferno's nice. Flying puppy, puppy. Flying childhood. Vibrant. We'll do anime. Why not? Um, intellectual. This guy's poem is shit. It is the shit poem <clears throat> anyone's ever ever read. Um, party, misery, family, heart, flower, dazzle, vacation, cheeks, intellectual. By the way, I've I've literally clicked my personal favorite ones here, and a few cheeky ones on purpose. Um, I mean, if if he family, wouldn't it? <clears throat> um, Doki Doki, fuck yes. Um, I don't even know what it means. A uh, vanilla. Would you like to know more? Desire. Bubbles. Bubbles is a cool word. Incapable blanket. That word. Misfortune broken. Fickle. Chocolate. Yes. Chocolate. Hi again, Luke. Right. Before we continue, let me just check our goal. How are we doing? What are we up to? We have raised a total of $453 for our charity gamers outreach who well fucking hell they do loads of stuff but their main thing that they do is they get games to children in hospitals all around the world they do it in nine different countries and gamers outreach helps sick children in different kinds of hospitals play video games with each other and just just, in, just, just i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get too i'm gonna cry again they're just amazing they get literally they get Video games, children in hospitals, they are incredible. Gamers Outreach, that is who we are raising money for today. Um, we have raised $453 so far. Thank you everyone who has donated. You guys are literally changing people's lives with your donations. So thank you so much. Let's make sure I thank everyone new who's donated. Um, Sven, thank you so much. Just here supporting your first charity stream. Thank you, Sven. Really appreciate your donation of $5. Thank you so much. Alex, again, thank you very much for 20. Meg, thank you very much for 25. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you guys so much. Everyone who's donated, everyone who's helping raise money for an amazing cause. Our first ever charity stream. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll keep coming back and making sure we don't miss anybody. <clears throat> Hi again, Luke. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but... Cats, what <laughs> Luke, will you continue this game after stream? I'm going to complete this game. Don't worry. Well, I'm streaming again next Thursday. If the, if the game, like, I'll be doing, like, roughly six hours. Can we get the game done in six hours? Um, this might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. <clears throat> well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everybody's already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Luke. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, Luke. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack, this fucking motherfucker. Siri told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or whatever, but if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Nasuki! You certainly have a big mouth. Pause. For someone who keeps... A manga collection in the club room. <gasps> Nasuki finds stuck between saying Monica and manga. M manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Nasuki plops back into her seat. 
Don't worry, guys. Luke always gives it his best, as long as he's having fun. That does sound like me. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. God damn, man. I, I, I must be quite good looking, all right? Because I'm just saying, fucking hell. These lions don't work in real life. I'm, I must be a hunk. In the game, I must look exactly like I look in real life. Damn. Sorry, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set the house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? Well, you could say that. <clears throat> I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Luke can become good friends too. That's right, Yuri. Um, Sayori. Hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh! Oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. What? Is it Sayori? Me? M me? Well, not really. Don't be shy. Show him your boobies. It's really nothing. What is it? What is it? Never mind. Siri made it sound like a big deal, and it's really not. What do I do? Sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it, chica. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place, you know. So any nice gesture from you, it's a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I won't make a big deal about it if you don't want me to. All right. Well, here. Yuri reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked up a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know... Discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is the girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much? Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Whew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica uh, to kick off some scheduled activities in the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Suri and Monica are having a cherry conversation in the corner. Cheery conversation in the corner. Thank you very much for your donation! You are donated to an amazing course, thank you! I'll read them all again in a little bit. Thank you so much. You're fucking awesome. Anyone who can support charity, my kind of person. Yuri's face is already buried in her book. And I want to bury my face in the book as well, of course. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile... Nasuki is rummaging around in the closet. Ugh. I hear Nasuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Fuck off, weeb, she says, turning to me. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just going to mess it up? Nasuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga? You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those things you can't admit you're really into until you figure out where the other person stands. How did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. The size is kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I see. There's a low, a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull out the stack. There it is! Nasuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Yeah, much better. Seeing a box set with a book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I'm starting to like Nasuki a lot. I know that feeling. I get a closer look at the box she's admiring. Path Fate Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. This probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're going to judge, you can go do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. That is such a fucking... My God, is she friends with my wife? It wasn't what you said. It was the way you said it. Uh, but I tell you one thing, Luke. Consider this a lesson. Straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. Well, how are you supposed to judge a book? In fact... Nasuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Aha! I stare at the cover. 
It features four girls in colourful attire, striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly... Mo I don't know what that word means. Don't just stand there. Uh... That's when he grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. <laughs> Does she? Uh, she then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsill. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Alright, she seems kind of cool. <clears throat> wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Why is that? I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Nasuki blushes. D don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Nasuki crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. Eva. All right, now I'm way smoother than this guy. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Mm. Not that I can say it's practically bad. a bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer. God damn. Hey man, bro, smoothish. Um, OM Geeky 01. Did I say thank you to you? I don't think I did. OM Geeky 01, thank you very much for the sub with Prime, by the way. I'm sorry I missed it seven minutes ago, but thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, claiming the additional space. While she hopes I won't notice. I can feel appearing over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Ah, she's like me. Most people say they, like, read books more times in their life. I've only ever read the books I've read once. Uh, maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Huh? I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like a bunch of friends in school. Typical slice-of-life affair. I kind of grow out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Is it going to be a plot? Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. Uh, Moro Moshi, hello, hello, hello. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a girl at the ice cream shop. But that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still really entertaining. But later on, there's, just, there's all kinds of drama. Like one of them gets to tie their shoes and someone else drops a cookie on the floor and it breaks in half. And they're very sad. Like when they get into all their backstories when one of them has a romance. And, you know, romance is hot. That's really what makes it so good. There are so many touching parts as well. Is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. Maybe you are a weeb after all. Me, <laughs> maybe. Hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, Masuki gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't yet seen you at your full power. Hmm. Good save. Now, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but there is a lot of baking in this manga. Well, Masuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah. Why does that matter? It doesn't. I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's just a coincidence. It just happened to get to the baking around the same time I got the manga. Like, I would never get into anything because it's in a manga. I, I feel bad for anyone who's that impressionable. <laughs> like, I remember when I started reading Jujutsu Kaisen and I started going around, you know, sacrificing humans and, and, and curses and all sorts of stuff. Definitely not a coincidence. <clears throat> I guess that explains Nasuki's interest in baking. Still one of the hobbies. Still of all the hobbies to pick up from the manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? This is her? She looks so young here. We read on for a few minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. But she is, of course, 18. Um, are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Question mark. Hmm? You don't? Uh, that's not well. I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Will you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Sorry. Huh. Like I could ever get any friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up to them about them being like, 
Uh, you still haven't gotten out of that yet? God damn. Sounds like me. Before I found... Before I found my true core. Makes me want to punch them in the face! Ugh. I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge. Much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitate towards the other losers. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Huh? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found out. At least it's safe here in the club room. Kept Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Oh, eh? I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am reading it. Well, it's not like this solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Uh, so? Ha! Jeez, that's enough. Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Masuki starts laughing. Ha ha ha! I totally forgot that happens. Masuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Uh, Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... <gasps> I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Masuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. Ah, she's one of those who's bossy and not bossy. You guys have a name for it, right? Uh, but if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. I'm being able to provide that to Natsuki, uh, for whom it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile. I to myself, uh, Sunde, Sun, Sundari, Sun, Sunde, Sunda, Sundara, Sundara, Sundan, Sundara, Sundari. Uh. <coughs> okay, everyone. Yeah. Are you all ready with today's poems? Question, question. Well, come on. Could you, your timing be any worse? Sorry. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there. Eh? Ah! Masuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides a good 12 inches away from me, which is coincidentally the size of my. Alright! Guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Nasuki. You're just giving it back? Do you want to know what happens? Yeah, but. Monica just said. Would you like to know more? Dumb. Just take it home with you. Eh? Is that really alright? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using any spare time to read this. Well, of course. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. Oh my god. Um, and if it gets bent, I'll kill you. By tomorrow? I only got partway through the volume so far. It might be full behind on one of the shows if I can't want to get through this. I suppose it's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Nasuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and clearly slip the book into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yes, I did. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why didn't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Masuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. And pull out a massive katana uh, and chop one of the desks in half. Then I take off my shirt and I parade around like the champion I am. Who should I show my poem to first? Avec pardon! Hello, hello! For me, it's between... <sighs> Nasuki, who I kind of like, or Yuri. But I feel like I'm gonna go Yuri. I feel like I'm gonna go Yuri. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should sit start with her. <clears throat> I can trust her opinion, to be fair. Yuri. Mm -hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes. More than enough time for her to finish reading it. Um, oh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. You are shit. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Oh my gosh, she hates it. Uh, yeah? Why'd you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Oh no! Ah, shit. 
No! Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I, I, I really didn't notice. <clears throat> what were you saying? Right. Um, It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical for newer writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognize... Hello, Misa Pizza! And the most notable thing I recognize is when new writers is that they tend to try and make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick writing style that separates from the topic matter and they form fit the two together. The end result is both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering rear is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. <laughs> of course, it's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. <clears throat> Not just finding them and building them, but getting them but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Yasuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased how? Ah, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry, it's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me or Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Well, now that you've criticized mine, yours is shit, Yuri. Uh, Yuri smiles dreamily as if it's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, it isn't supposed to be, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Mm. Remember to stay hydrated. I'm waiting for a good moment to drink, but you know what? You're all right. It didn't rhyme, Al poem. <clears throat> oh, I was reading my head. I literally just started reading my head. <laughs> See, that's how quick I read in my head. <coughs> Alright, my bad, my bad, my bad. You need an air up sponsor like to stay moment? hydrated. Funny you should say that, Amber. <clears throat> Got an interesting email the other day. <clears throat> my bad. Um, I wasn't thinking that's all. Uh, but it took you a long time to read. <laughs> hey, what are you saying, Yuri? Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. The part with dragons was great. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short, like my skirt. I usually write longer poems. Not at all! Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? What? Where the fuck did this come from? Random. Huh? Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Luke. I didn't think it was about a ghost. <clears throat> really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember, the poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Oh. <coughs> Just clearing my throat. Eh, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Mm. Who shall I show my poem to next? Alright, let's go to Suki. Let's do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's start with the things I don't like. Your hair, your shoes, your fucking... First of all, 
Uh, Nasuki rereads my poem. Never mind. I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Fuck you. <laughs> well, that's the point of sharing in the first place. I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Uh -huh. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel more comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. <laughs> well, I I'd be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me how dumb... What? You're supposed to show me a dumb poem and make me go, Ha! Well, that's... That it fuck me, my brain. Well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So in other words, you liked it? Ugh. Masuki the taunt gets caught in her throat. You you're so You don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that I'm fuck you! I'm pretty sure you never actually said that. I say them I say that mostly to myself. Nasuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? <sighs> Fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Alright, well, that's interesting. Eagles can fly. What the fuck is this? Monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can sink. Teachers can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. I see. So chat is in agreement. This is an incredible poem. Fucking hell. I thought mine was good. She showed me the fuck up. Yeah. I told you they weren't gonna like it. Hello, King. I like it! What? Just be honest. I am. I fucking love it. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and shit. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make you... Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Exactly! You know, I'm really just like, like Natsuki. I like when it comes... I like it when it's easy to read, but hits you hard. Like in this poem. I agree. I agree. Ugh. Seeing everyone around you do great things can really be disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. Would you the other like nice thing is simple writing because it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set it up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it feel flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. Clever girl. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it's meant. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. She's literally the fucking dragon girl from Reincarnated as a Slime. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that the youngest one here, did ya? Yeah. Guess not. Thank you very much for your donation to an amazing cause. We are raising money for Gamers A Outreach. I appreciate every single one of you supporting it, helping us get to our goal to help raise money to children in hospitals over the world. Thank you very much. I'll read out all the donation names at the next pause break. Thank you very much, everybody. If you want to donate, you can just type in exclamation donation into chat or click the pinned link and you can give a donation to help children in hospitals play video games all around the world. The goal bar isn't updating, is it manual? Should be updating. Is it not updating? <coughs> it might take a little time, but it should be. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I didn't really care how old everyone is, but if Masuki is feeling proud, then I'm going to take it away from her. Ah, that's too sorry. She's probably going to be the nicest about it. This is a good poem, Luke. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. I knew she was going to be like this. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. I swear. I swear. I think I've been trolled. I think I've been trolled. I was... <laughs> I, I swear, I'm going to end up playing a six hour to eight hours campaign. And it's just going to be about poems in a literature club. And I was like, oh, I need a horror game. Is this like a big troll? I'm, it, this could literally be like a big troll that the internet knows that I don't actually know. I'm not even joking because I don't know fuck all about this game. It could literally be a troll. It could literally be a troll. It really could as well. Uh, <laughs> imagine fucking how it is. If this is just like some random troll. Uh, 
I swear, chat, I'll never trust you again. Uh, or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the classroom. Ah, uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Luke. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Try new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. I'm here to bang, and that's it. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined, because I wanted to bang her the most, <laughs> knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll Would fucking see about that. <clears throat> so the music matches the poem I'm noticing. Dear sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish it away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. All right, it's cute. <clears throat> Sorry. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? Uh, no. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to, I, I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs on toast. <laughs> I'm really liking Sayori. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for, sh thanks for showing me. I imagine, imagine if it just one day she just misses breakfast and she just comes to school and she's a demon. Like that, that, and that's that's the plot of this. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Yeah. But next time, I won't forget, and I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. All right, we've got one more left. Monica. <clears throat> Hi, Luke. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Well, I was thinking of an only underwear day. You know, I thought it'd be really good. We could do it on like a really hot day. Everyone would be more comfortable and refreshing. You know, it could be like a pajama day, but underwear, what do you think? Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't worry, Luke. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know. But that's sort of the barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yes, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. She suspiciously hmm. Hmm. Thank you very much for your donation! For supporting an amazing charity! Appreciate you guys! I think we've actually broken the halfway mark. Thanks to you wonderful damn people. Thank you so much! My first ever charity stream, and you guys are crushing it. And once again, I'll read out all my names at the next break. I'll read out all the names of donations. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you! I like it, Luke. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no, no! It kind of makes me think of something Masuki would write. Oh, no. Now, you see, if I hadn't read Nasuki's poem already, I may take that as a compliment. But I've read Nasuki's poem, and Nasuki's poem was dog shit, all right? <laughs> it's fucking... <laughs> what the hell? <clears throat> ah, she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. She's a genius. <laughs> you take that back. Ah, oh, I was only joking. I, you know what? I'm just jealous, all right? Because I could never write a poem as good as Nasuki. That's that's the real reason. So take that as a compliment. 
Aha! If you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by this person? Silverstein? Eh? It was informative. Lynch him chat. It's just because I'm super jealous. Maybe a long time ago. He's a famous for storytelling all kinds of stories with just simple few words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes, only a few lines long. It might even feel like they're written for kids, but you think about them. They can express views in the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Nasuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. She cheekily winks at me. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kind of styles, but I'll always help you find the one that suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Aha! Aha! <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. Doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. <clears throat> Hole in the wall. I walk into the toilet. I'm joking. This could be really fucking suspicious. I'm just saying, this is the name of this poem. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My re my retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It wasn't too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Alright. <clears throat> Interesting. So what do you think? It's very free form. Is that what you call it? Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's kind of the style that's gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Eh, well, I'm not sure if you know how to put it, but the other day I decided to partake in a little experiment and I went to a bathroom and I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a little bit. An epiphany? Yeah. Something like that. Alright. Kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this is, if you keep your pen the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for the day. She's not actually wrong, by the way. When uh, when I wrote a book, um, I, if I ever got stuck, I never got writer's block because I'd always... This is actually just true, by the way. I'm just getting off tangent here. I would just keep going. I would literally just keep going and then I'd come back and tidy it up later. That is something I always did. Uh, and then it's just like... The other thing is sometimes you have a really good thing you want to write in your head. Um, so I'll be like, oh, in my head, I really wanted to like write this scene. So sometimes I'd write that scene and then work my way back from it, um, which is another good way of writing. Anyway, here you go. <clears throat> Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even though just being nice, there's no way my poem stands to theirs. This is a literature club after all. <sighs> I guess that's what I end up getting myself into. Across the room, Surya and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Asuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read them in tandem, I watch their expressions change. Asuki's eyebrows fur in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Asuki dismissively returns the poem on the desk with one hand. 
I guess you could say it's fancy. Thanks? Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clear about the feelings of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. It just, I just meant the language, I guess. I wasn't trying to say, I, I was trying to say something nice. Eh? What do you mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm? I wasn't looking for suggestions. I would have asked someone who actually liked Oh, if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayuri liked it. And Luke did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me? I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particular inspiring, which I haven't yet. And Luke liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Asuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Uh, Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Luke appreciates my... They're going to fight over me? <clears throat> God damn, man. Maybe you're jealous that Luke appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? How do you know that he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? Uh, I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do... Over... Uh, uh. Mm. <laughs> Is everyone okay? <laughs> well, you know what? Fuck you! I wasn't the only one... What the hell is this? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Luke started showing up. God damn. God damn. Uh, Fel Knight, thank you very much for the sub with Prime, by the way. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, Fel Knight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the sub with Prime. Fair enough. Nasuki! Um, Nasuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I, I, I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if they noticed I was standing there. Luke! Stop looking at my tits! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't happen in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out of the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Oh, don't ask me. Help me explain it to her, Luke. Wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to complete, to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not necessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that right, Luke? Uh, well... Uh, how do I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. I'm a fucking idiot. Whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Oh, for fuck's sake. In this situation, in this situation, I would literally be like, I ain't getting involved. That's actually what I would do. <sighs> the thing is, Yuri is feeling all self-conscious about her giant gazongas, right? Nasuki seems like if I was actually in this situation, she's the girlfriend. She's, she's a bit like awkward, a bit weird, manga fan, she's the girlfriend, right? That's the one you should go for, Nasuki. She I have the most in, in common with Nasuki. Um, and she clearly likes me. There's, there's like definitely like a, a, a light chemistry there, right? Ah, I don't want to pick... I don't... Hello, Rose. Hello, 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 hello. I don't want to pick the Help Me Sayori because I just feel like it's a cop-out. I don't... Oh, fuck me, this sucks, man. <sighs> fuck it. Help me, Sayori. Nasuki? Nasuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri? But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! 
Eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sari uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Luke? Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I agree. It's unfair for others to interject with their own feelings about our conflict. Yeah, unless Sari wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. <laughs> it's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? That's exactly why... Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Asuki, Yuri. You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. And I love them because of the differences. Asuki, Asuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because, well, also, Asuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. It is true. They are. Mm. Sayori. Sorry, stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Nasuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So, this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, but I can organize things. But I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess it just means Sari is amazing in her own way, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious how she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Oh my gosh, sneeze. How would I rate the OST? Best OST I've ever heard. Thank you for the bless you wishes. Take good care of her, okay? Take good care of her, son. I would hate to see her get... I would hate to see herself get her. Mm -hmm. That makes two of us. You can count on me. I'm amazing. Monica smiles sweetly. Why is it my stomach to not? Do I like Monica? Such a genuine person really does make a good present, regardless of what she says. If only I could get a chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone, it's about time for us to leave. How did you feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right, I guess, mostly. Luke, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something for your friends too. So, your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kinds of poem everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Luke, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Hee <laughs> Sari beams at me. It's truly been a while since Sari and I have spent this much time together. I can't really, I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Um. <clears throat> Sari, what happened earlier? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Nasuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. It's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise, they're both wonderful people. You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Whew. You know, Luke, it's nice that I get to spend time with you at the club. Because I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sari still hasn't caught on the kind of situation I'm in. Sure. Being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? I'm trying to bang here, man. Well, we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and in the ass. I said that more to myself than her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Time to thank people for the charity stuff you guys are doing behind the scenes. Let's see, how much have we raised so far? Have we broken the midway? We have! $523, you guys are fucking insane! Raised for Gamers Outreach. Thank you very much, you wonderful, amazing people! Damn, you guys are awesome. 
fucking hell. We smashed up. We're already halfway. Love you guys. I am streaming again next week. This is Remember, this is a two-stream thing. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Ramses, thank you so much uh, for the $5 contribution. Contrib contribution? Contribution. Thank you so much. Monica is the best. Ramses says, thank you very much. Thank you. K, thank you so much for $50, K. Thank you so much. So damn kind of you, K. Thank you so much. First ever donation. I see you're playing Doki Doki Lich Club. Heard some good stuff about it, and I hope you're enjoying it. Thank you so much, K. I appreciate you helping the cause to get games to children hostels who need them. Thank you so much. Uh, Hoga Beluga, hello. Welcome, by the way. Uh, Amber, thank you very much for $15. Thank you so much. What's this? What's that? Huh? Okay. Uh, Amber, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the $15. Appreciate you so much, Amber. That is very, very kind of you. Thank you, everyone who has donated. Every single person. Thank you so much. Appreciate all of you helping the good cause. Thank you so much for raising already $523. My first ever charity stream. You guys are crushing. I really appreciate all of you supporting the charity. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. If it's successful, then we can do this every year. You can donate simply by putting the command in chat. You can see the link at the top of the chat window as well. You can put the command in chat that's in the title, which is exclamation donation. It will bring up the donation link. Or you can go on the about page and you will see a link to the page to donate there as well. There's three ways of donating. Um, right. Plenty of ways to donate. Um, best way, just looking in chat, you'll see plenty of links. Right. I'm not going to pick a girl to impress. I'm literally just going to be me. Should I be me and not cheeky or should I be me and cheeky? The thing is, I, I am cheeky. So I, I don't mind being me and not cheeky. I don't mind being me and cheeky. Right, let me just, actually, before we jump into this, let me just thank this person as well. Um, let me thank this person as well. Uh, my bloody, my beard. My beard going up my nose. Um, da Biggie, thank you so much for $27. Thank you so much. You are fucking awesome. Thank you so much to Biggie. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for $27. Love Doki Doki Literature Club. Got to get that total to a nice $550. Thank you so much to Biggie. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, everybody, for supporting the charity today. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Got to be Climax. Um, explode. Um, vibrant? Uh, or game? Vibrant, I like that word. Tenacious, good word. Horror, gotta be horror. Uh, landscape, dreams, memories, calm, lust. Yeah, let's get banging. Nature, fireflies, pout, incapable, peaceful. Feather, music, uh, nature. Hopeless, excitement, fantasy, blanket, promise, secretive, misery, ambient. I really like the word ambient, but yeah, ambient's just a really nice word, you know. I mean, it's nice. Mm. <laughs> Giggles, cute. Vertigo is a cool word. Awesome. Awesome one's one of my favorite words. Uh, heaven sent. Heart. Massacre. <laughs> ah, fuck it. Um, kitty. Strawberry. Oh, yeah, strawberry. Play. Anger. Question. Question. Skipping. Vitality. Bouncy. Yes. Milk. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Family. Yeah. Um, essence, sadness, jump, lollipop. Oh, I like aura though, it's nice. The lollipop sounds kind of funny. We'll go aura. Dazzle, vanilla, va variance. A variance? Ocean, summer, dark, fear, lazy, fun, hot, ocean. Shiny, twirl, insight, un. whatever the fuck that word is. Swimsuit, journey, infinite. Infinite's a cool word. Swimsuit. I like infinite. Agonizing, no. Clumsy, judgment, no, no, no. Uh, sensation. Skirt, death, eternity, uh, puppy. Uh, electricity. Bop, graveyard, vacation, silly, philosophy, spinning, graveyard, I guess. Mm. Mm. Charm? Mm. Kiss. Mwah. Pleasure, tears, meager, daydream. Amazing. Doki Doki. Always gotta be. <clears throat> Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. If we're a little more comfortable with here over the past couple of days, entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Luke. Yo, Sayori. What up, homie? We bumped fist. Respect. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hee <laughs> hee. 
I'm just still not used to you being in the club. That's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. I can think of a couple other ways. Um, Omi de Londres, hello! Uh, but I guess it's the simple things for you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Uh, Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ah. Uh, I knew it! I can see right through you, Sayori. You fucking motherfucker. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the classroom. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Ah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ha 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 ha, Yuri says. Yuri giggles. <laughs> eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just saying in my book. Yuri! Tell Luke to let me borrow some money. Uh, don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And uh, frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Hmm? Ah, uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I, I got too absorbed in my book. Hmm? Ha ha ha. I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. <laughs> that. Still, come review, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Hee hee hee. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have come if, if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsu into making them. Come on, give me a little more credit than that, Sayori. Eh. Fwap. Ah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Wasn't that... What was the... Oh, I just think this popped in my head. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. So he glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my retribution. Retribution? Actually, that one almost worked. Ha ha! I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It wasn't totally worth seeing your reaction, though. That's Suki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori so hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. So he rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mmm. So he suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. So he takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Nazuki. Can I try it? Jesus. Beggars can't be choosers, but yours is chocolate. Yeah? Why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. So I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> so he gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Nasuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Hmm? Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Nasuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Mm-hmm. Mouthful Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez! You're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? Nasuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Huh. Where's Monica anyway? Question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. Hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. Probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Uh... <clears throat> that's not true. Oh, wait, she said that's true. That's true! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super... Sorry. Ah, there you are. How dare you. I didn't mean to be late. It's not like you're the president or anything. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth were you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. 
Ah, oh, she wants to bang me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. Whereas, kind of just lost track of time. Uh, that makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. Kind of just started recently. I always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Luke. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. Buddy, beard hair. I'm cutting the beard tomorrow. <laughs> so I miss anything? No, not really. I chose to leave Surrey's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Suri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared in the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with this literature related by myself? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening to serious conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is... that The idea of literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. But it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Serious thinking. So, Sorry is taking this seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. That's a good point. In that case, do you think the food will do the trick? What kind? Well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Good thinking. Nasuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Nasuki makes the best cupcakes. That works perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Mm-hmm. Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Suri is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Suri can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see this world through her eyes. <clears throat> Wah! I have my eyes to my Suri's face, smiling, filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Yeah, sorry! Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't a napping club. Does our school have a napping club? <laughs> you're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in the club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that out so loud. I glance on my shoulder to see Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yes. That was at the horror. I told you it was a scary game. <laughs> You guys are right, that was terrifying. Oh, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Siri. He, <laughs> it's what I do best. Welcome to the Roughnecks. Roughnecks. That's a problem. <gasps> what about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's, it's a secret. I knew it. Come on, at least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Siri, it's written all over you, eh? Siri glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look at your hair is sticking out here. Huh? I run my fingertips down the, oh, hold on. <clears throat> I run my fingertips down the side of Siri's hair, trying to straighten it out. Kimmy, thank you very much for the 17 months, Kimmy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kimmy. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Kimmy. Thank you, thank you, thank you! 17 months is insane! Damn, Kimmy! 17 months? Fucking hell, Kimmy. You're five, five months away. I was gonna say five months away for two years. 
Uh, my math ain't mathin'. But thank you very much, Kimmy. You're an absolute legend. Thank you. Thank you, Kimmy. Jeez, 70 months is nuts, by the way, Kimmy. Freaking love you. Thank you. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fool for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste stain on your collar right there. It's like me the other day, I had that all down my front. I tried to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. You meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you, you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. What the fuck is this? Hee <laughs> hee. Alright. <clears throat> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I brought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. <laughs> Don't say that out loud. Haha. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now. So, uh, why does it feel strange to see Siri's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Huh? It's not worth it at all. Siri hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Siri puts her arms out and twirls around. So, if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that it's a good thing? Because if I have a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine, fine. It's a deal. He Sari definitely seems like the best choice for a, um, a partner, I'd say, out of all the girls. She lives close. We've got a relationship with her. She seems actually interested in, and likes me. I, I, I definitely think Sari is, is the person. Um, Cracksaw, thank you very much for the resub for a year! A whole year, Cracksaw, you've done it! A whole year! Happy anniversary to you! Thank you for the resub for a whole year, Cracksaw. Thank you, thank you, thank you! Appreciate you, absolute legend. Big stream today. Thank you very much, Cracksaw. Thank you, everyone who's donating. Use the prompt exclamation donation in chat to get the link up to donate to Tiltify to help gamers outreach. My first ever charity stream. Um, if you can spare a little bit of money to help gamers outreach, please do. It's an amazing cause. I appreciate every single one of you helping so far. Thank you very much. Appreciate you wonderful people. <coughs> Thank you. I guess we're really better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. We're doing it again, Sayori. Uh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Yeah? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Luke, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Siri still trots away to retrieve her poem. Alright, let's do it. <clears throat> let's just work top down. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Luke. Yeah? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Huh? You're too honest sometimes, Siri. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Siri. You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Ha ha! Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has a little, more, a little bit more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it because I wrote it? Are you sure you just like it? What, are, you sh are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Luke poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like, I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet again. I guess she hugs the sheet against her chest. It's so weird, Sayori. He, well, I'm not very good at figuring out poems if, if they're good or bad. That's why 
and it's go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. And again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Siri. Well, I like happy the most. Sometimes when you have a little bit of rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rain cloud. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Luke. I should go write them down then. You can read my poem now, okay? <coughs> right. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle is a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them away from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? Did you really write this? Of course I did. Did I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this, coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy. Well, <coughs> not exactly. Maybe because I'm used to you being so cheerful. But never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, oh, thanks. I like it. I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. Ugh, buddy. Ah. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yay! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ah ha ha. Don't get that in your head. Sorry, is always a habit of making you obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. quick this stream has gone by the way like it's blinked by and crazy <coughs> crazy who should i show my poem to next um we haven't well we're working our way down we'll keep going down nasuki then hmm well it's not terrible but it's pretty disappointing after your last one then again if this one was as good as your last one it'll be I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your own style right away. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. You think so? 
Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you've never really struck me as her type. Siri has a type all of a sudden? God damn it. Yeah, I'm a no beard hair. Ah. Um. <clears throat> well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone. God damn it. Give me one second. Let me just rub my nose. Ah. Ah. Alright. Uh, push down a beard hair. Alright. Ah. <clears throat> I would shave it off. It's the wife. My wife likes the beard. I'd I'd be I'd I like stubble. I like stubble. My wife likes the beard. I'm a stubble guy. And when you're married, you only need to look good for your wife, so. Look good for your wife. Um, well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. What the fuck is this? Bloody beard hairs as well. That was a little unnecessary, but think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would have probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. Fucking Pennywise. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem here. Alright, well, she seems a bit more of a dick today. <clears throat> Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Okay, I like spiders. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favourite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. She likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. This is literally like reading a, a book to my children. Um, it, it, it's amazing. It's perfect. Uh, Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she likes... It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spiders lovers. Without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. But yeah. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps the people realize how stupid they are being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an arrogant jerk. Okay. <clears throat> Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can't be... It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure, something that you're afraid to tell people. Uh, if they find out, they'd make fun of it and think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is also important. But I want to make people think it's not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one tomorrow too. So I look forward to it. Alright, let's go see Yuri and her personality. <clears throat> yes. Don't forget to donate. There's, there, this is the first of two streams to reach that goal. Um, I'll be doing another sponsor stream next week, at the same time on Thursday, um, where we'll probably be continuing Doki Doki, as I don't think I'm going to be finishing it today. Um, <coughs> make sure you guys donate <coughs> if you can, of course. If you can't, don't worry about it at all. Uh, but if you can, if you can spare anything, then donate for a good cause. Gamers Outreach. You can use uh, the exclamation donation. Uh, command and it will give you the link to Tiltify. So thank you everyone who supported so far. Let's see what you've written for today. Mmm, mmm. Well done, Luke. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Trying for you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid uh, to be a little more daring. <laughs> Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try
Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. <clears throat> All right. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of cutting my knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon incites its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in my eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken the following to me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently. So my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A, r a rush of blood, classic pavilion conditioning. I slice the bread and find and feed myself again. That is weird. Is she talking about fucking Sayori? Um, I was a little more daring than yesterday. <clears throat> I can see that. <clears throat> It's metaphorical, is it? I don't know if it's my fault, but I can begin to imagine what this poem's about. <coughs> That's right. It was a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and convey emotions through them. Yeah. If I take it at face value, then I can't even figure what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels to indulge any more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So sometimes I enjoy writing about them. That's funny. Hmm? Didn't Nasuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for strange interest? Eh? She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter who, what you're into as long as you're not into hurting anybody. She, she's right. I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? And please don't tell her I said that. Don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, I hadn't learned to embrace my weirdness. Would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Interesting. <coughs> Hi again, Luke. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. What? It's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ah, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Give my poem to Monica. All right. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sarah would write. Like, is that so? You and Sarah are really good friends, right? Ah, it's the second time I've heard this. I wouldn't be surprised if you had these sort of things in common. Ah, well, we may be good friends, but Sarah and I are actually really different. Mm hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you are really care about each other as well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Ah, could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy such sad things too? Yeah, that is totally unexpected. Well, to each their own, and you shouldn't be afraid of to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one has turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Hold on, I might sneeze. No sneeze. <clears throat> okay. This one's called Save Me. Bit odd. The colors, they won't stop. 
bright, beautiful colours, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and endless. I don't know this word. Uh, cacophy of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grafting waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sign, cosy tangent? Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless load me hey veggie load me Interesting. What if I save and load the game? Why did it say load me? Does it matter? I was reading my head again. I was reading my head again. I did it again. Sorry. I'm, um, I, I never said that. My bad, everybody. Um, <clears throat> it's just that kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to spend uh, spatial words together can completely change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. I guess the load thing didn't actually do anything. Uh, it's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Aha! Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of feelings, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it in that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. might need to change your mind when something unexpectedly may happen wait is this TV even about writing what am i even talking about Ahaha, that's my advice for the day thanks for listening <coughs> okay <coughs> we're all done reading each other's poems right i have something extra planned for today so if everyone could come and sit at the front of the classroom is this about the festival well kind of do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put anything good together in a few days. Well, we'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sari has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets as well. We can give out during the event. Okay, that's a great idea and all, but it doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Sorry, I, I thought you heard about it yesterday. We're going to be performing. Performing? Fucking hell, Oshinoko? Um, Monica, yes, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Siri's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Haha! Um, Sorry, who's been controlling coloring a poster, holds it up for everyone to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? God, I'm sleepy in my eye. Uh, you didn't, you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. 
but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Nasuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Na Nasuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite the poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the ones responsible for the fate of the club. If we start an event and each put on a good performance, then it inspires others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we will be able to show everyone what literature is about. Yes. I'm going to be honest, I never would join a literature club if it was about poems. If it was about books, I would join. About poems, I'm not joining. But then again, if it had these four women in it and it was about poems, I'd join. I would join. It's extremely expressing your feelings. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Okay. Finding new horizons. God damn, she is hinting, hinting, hinting. And having fun, right? That's it, Sarah. I get it. I'll meet you in the, uh, <clears throat> the closet with the manga books. Um, that's right. And it's those reasons we're in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do, big boy. I know we all do. And if it takes it, us standing in front... Blah, 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 English. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Mmm. Mmm. Nasuki and Yuri remain silent. Sari looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Siri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Uh, well, maybe, but... Mm, it looks like Nasuki doesn't have any arguments left. <laughs> ah, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Whew. Thanks, Nasuki. What about you, Yuri? Uh, Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Ah, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ha! That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. The club is seriously going to be the death of me. <laughs> Foreshadowing, maybe? Uh, oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of the poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem! Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply a natural? glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the, re the recitation. And the four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Huh? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting up... Putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like... What happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books? Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns. Its structure that she in in you cites, in you cates, with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the wild whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality, glances around her as if bewildered by herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we don't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Uh, 
looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Suri so hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Ah, aha! Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting it to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Suri begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her voice, her soft voice was made a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheering like Suri is. It's serene and bittersweet. If we were to read the poem on paper, it probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come out of Suri's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Suri meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone. Pause. I thought I knew through and through. Siri finishes, and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. He even Luke liked it. I guess it's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be the that other poems wouldn't work as well with that kind of delivery. Hmm? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, that's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Do you know what's funny? I'm not even joking. Shit could be happening in the background. I am literally focused on just reading but there could be like all sorts of shit happening as i'm clicking through this i have just been focused on reading that's literally it. just focused on reading <laughs> so funny didn't even think about that it'd be so funny if like the game just ends and goes this is what you missed in the background and it's like a whole fucking story unfolding i'm literally just reading the box at the bottom the sea monster yeah <laughs> we don't have much time for the festival you know <clears throat> okay now who's next masuki <laughs> Don't make me go before Luke. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Luke lower everyone's standard a little before I have to do it. Asuki, you fucking... <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I'll go. I might as well get it over with. I'm gonna flash all of you up there anyway. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with that one I wrote for today. I stand up in front of everyone on the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. So I decide to pull down my trousers to make me feel much better. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive an applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. Hello, uh, Potisuki. Hello. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. Yeah, that's true. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. Let's... That just leaves you, Nasuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, I'm going. Masuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Mmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Masuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Masuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well spoken out loud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Masuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd be you'd better not make me do that again. Ah well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put whatever face I want for other people. When it's just my friends, it's embarrassing. That's a surprise, Masuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about at the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming, though. It may be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick up a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort into the club. It makes me really happy. 
Ah, she's doing the scuff flashy thingy again. Ah, yeah, no problem, whatever. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. My awkward boner pops out from underneath my boxes. Whoop. Never mind. Let me just put this 12-inch bad boy away. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm that Suri and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica. All right. It seems like my character has a crush on Monica, and I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Suri? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee <laughs> hee. Jeez, guys. Don't make it such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, ah, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Luke. You don't have to say that. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori has been a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry I was spacing out. No wonder. Hmm? I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sorry fumbles with her words. Let's just say that one day, Yuri asked... What? Let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Uh-huh. What would you do? What kind of question is that? What kind of... Put me on the spot here. Eh. All right. Now the thing is, I can lie. Now, let me tell you guys. <clears throat> In a situation like this, you lie, and I'm gonna lie. Yuri ain't here. Yuri is not here in this. So, but you know who is here in this? Sayori. Sayori is here in this. So, Yuri not here. Sayori, right here. Sayori obviously wants me to say I walk home with Sayori. But if Yuri was here, my answer would be different. So in this situation, I'm gonna lie. I would still walk home with you, Sayori. You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. There you go. I just gave you guys some fucking amazing advice. You're welcome. And I'm not even joking. If anyone ever asks you a question in real life, Remember that the only person that's going to hear the answer to that question is the person who asked the question. So you can easily change your mind later on. Just lie. Fucking lie. That's when you're, when you, when it's this sort of shit. Lie. When you're an adult, now I'm married, I tell the truth all the damn time. <laughs> She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Luke. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted to, so... Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating over something that's never going to happen? Hmm? The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sorry to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. The only problem is now... The only problem is now... If Yuri does ask me, and I do say yes, Sayori is going to be twice as hurt. So... Sometimes lying can backfire as well, I say. I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Alright. I'll do this. Then I'm saving. And then we'll be wrapping up, my friends. Alright? So, while I, while I fill this last one out, let me just say... I will do a roundup at the end. I want to say thank you, everyone who's donated up here. I'll go for the entire list at the end of today's stream. Thank you so much to everybody. Uh, but I will do a wrap up at the end. I'm just, I just wanted to do like a last reminder. Please make sure you guys donate if you can using the command exclamation donation. Make sure you donate. I will be streaming again next week. The second part of the stream next week, my friends. You've got to continue. I can't. I've got to go to bed. I've literally got, um, can't really talk too much about this, but I've literally got a four hour interview tomorrow for a specific music festival in Japan uh, where I've got to talk about. Um, certain Japanese artists, so yes. Um, but I'll talk about I'll talk more about this this game at the end. Don't worry. Um, 
But there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Make sure you guys donate. Anyone who can donate, please. If not, we'll try and reach the goal next week as well. So we'll be. This is a two-part stream. This Thursday and next Thursday. So yes, there you go. <clears throat> right. These words are weird. Um. Memories. Uh, bed. Horror. Dark, unending lipstick kitty. I like kitties. That's funny. Sugar loud. I like kitty. Fireflies. Whispers nice. Vertigo calm. Nightgown. Kind of like nightgown, you know. Is there any reason to all this? Uh, vivid. Uh, ambient. Ambient. Um, awesome, of course. One of my favorite words. Essence. Essence is nice. Clouds. Climax. Uh, uh, socks. Huh. Um, captive. Warm. Spies. Headphones. I don't really like any of these. These are all shit. This is a very shit one. Um, whistle? Uh, cute. Waterfall. Bouncy. Scars. Shopping. Sensation. Puppy. Starscapes. Nice word. Strawberry. New strawberry. Oh, never mind. Um, we didn't get Doki Doki this time. Anime. I like whirlwind though. If I don't pick anime, it's gonna be annoyed. Right, anime. Right. There we go. Let's save it. We'll save here just because that one told me to save, so I'm suspicious of this one. So we'll save here. There we go. Thursday. Is that my time? Oh, it's late. There we go. Done. Is that it? Have I saved? Have I saved? Did I miss Doki Doki? No. There we go. Right, I've saved. So I, is that it? I can just quit, yeah? I'm gonna save another slot. There we go. Okay. Oh, there you go. There's one button. All right. So, <clears throat> what the fuck? Like, actually, what the fuck? No spoilers, please. Um, I don't understand. It's supposed to be a horror game, right? I, s I swear, you know what, I swear, I swear if this turns out to be like some dating simulator and it is literally, it could, it really could just be a troll. I was like, we need to play a horror game. Doki Doki Literature Club. I was like, all right, let's play Doki Doki Literature Club. This is all I know, by the way. I was like, fuck it, Doki Doki Literature I swear PewDiePie played it back in the day. I never watched his videos, but I swear he did, right? Maybe I'm wrong. What the fuck is this? But yeah. I'm being I'm being genuine when I say this. This is a genuine blind reaction to this. I have I don't know fuck all about the game. It's been recommended. The only thing I know is when I asked for a horror game, this is what was recommended. So I got I'm going into this presuming at some point it gets scary, but the, I've played two and a half hours of it. <laughs> I I'm just saying, guys. <laughs> 